Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Jo Sinclair. I'm from FLIR Systems, and this is one of a few in our automation webinar series. Today, we're joined by a partner, Emitted Energy, and they're going to be going through the thermal processing, process monitoring for thermal forming. Our speakers today, first of all, from Emitted Energy, is Chris Lemon. Chris is an experienced program manager with an MBA and a bachelor's degree in engineering management. Chris has demonstrated a history of working in the automotive industry, skilled in leadership, public speaking, research, manufacturing, root cause analysis, and Six Sigma Black Belt, lean uh, manufacturing and continuous improvement. Our next guest speaker from Emitted Energy is Adam Fiorell. He's an experienced technical sales and account manager with manufacturing automation industry, specializing in infrared technologies. He's an ITC level two certified thermographer, offering solutions and thermal challenges utilizing FLIR handheld imagers and machine vision cameras to monitor and improve quality control, early fire detection, and critical equipment applications. I'm now gonna ha uh, hand it over to those two and um, enjoy. Thank you, Mary Jo, we really appreciate it. And thank you to all who are attending this webinar. We're really excited to be here and share a little bit about our technologies. So just a little bit about us. We are emitted energy as Mary Jo had uh, recognized us earlier. We're an infrared thermal technologies company. We are a FLIR certified gold premier partner. We're one of three systems integrators, certified systems integrators within the US and we're a master distributor of the FLIR automation camera. We have three offices nationwide in Ohio, Michigan and South Carolina. And we have multiple distribution and representative channels across the US. If you would like to learn more about Emitted Energy, please feel free to check out our website at www.emittedenergy.com or call us at 855-752-3347. Last year, we were recognized as a, a top 10 machine vision supplier solutions provider in 2019 by CIO applications. And FLIR also recognized us with a performance award uh, we are also an AIA uh, Advanced Vision Imaging member as well. So today we're going to talk specifically to our friends in thermal forming. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, what our thermal process monitoring systems can do, or we call this a TPMS. We'll call it a TPMS throughout the presentation. Understand that stands for Thermal Process Monitoring Solution. Um, the process of thermal forming has been around for quite some time now. The process is actually quite easy to understand, as everyone on this call knows. It involves heating sheets of plastic to a high temperature until they become pliable enough and can be molded for use in different applications. Easy to understand, yes. However, execution can sometimes be very challenging. So let's just look at a few of the real life challenges related to thermal forming. The process of thermal forming requires the use of large plastic sheets that will have to be fed into the machine over and over again. Because of the very nature of this process, increased extrusion happens to be a big problem in thermal forming. Products tend to, uh, tend to break at certain temperatures. Plastic sheet is stretched under pressure in this method, hence the products formed using thermal forming tend to break uh, when they reach certain temperatures. Inconsistent thermal profiles across the entire sheet is, a, is an everyday real problem of asking for solutions. And um, also just uh, to name one more, thermal forming uses more plastic than most other methods. Nearly 10 to 20% more, in fact, is used to make any product in this method. And this, as we know, this adds to the cost and creates ex uh, extensive wastage as well. So with that said, I'm gonna turn the presentation over Actually, you know what, let me, let me talk through this, Adam, and I'll get to you in a second. So thermal process monitoring systems, again, our TPMS, we offer a couple of different solutions, condition monitoring and process monitoring and control. Um, condition monitoring TPMSs typically go into just that static scene where you need to monitor a constant process. Process monitoring and control, as Adam will uh, present here in a few minutes to you, some real life case, uh, real case studies uh, and examples of this, would be uh, an example of continuous monitoring in the automation processes, uh, bi-directional equipment integrations and machine vision, uh, making intelligent decisions on a process. 
So typical applications of this, we have six different lanes. Today we're going to be focusing on thermal forming, but we also have multiple adhes adhesive inspection customers as well as plastic joining, packaging, food and beverage, and injection molding customers. So a little bit about our TPMS. Emitted Energy has created a complete process monitoring solution utilizing integrated thermal imaging systems with real-time infrared thermal data collection and designed software intelligence. These systems depict out-of-control process limits with analytical trending for analysis and smart decision-making. The systems can connect to your existing PLCs to communicate within your machinery, thus gaining you control of your process and preventing unwanted issues in wasted scrap. Utilizing only the best FLIR infrared thermal cameras, these systems will provide the most reliable information, allowing you to optimize your quality needs. We're very excited to announce in 2019, we have created and developed our own proprietary software. Uh, it's very user-friendly software uh, titled Enlighten, which can provide a solution for multiple processes. As stated before, we're going to be focusing today on thermal forming. So just uh, wrapping that up on a, in a nice little pretty bow, why use infrared technology? Well, as stated, it provides 100% product check on every machine cycle. It's reliable and consistent from part to part. It measures the actual weld or temperature on the part. It's fully integrated within your machine for automated decision-making, and it provides quality assurance that the weld or the temperature on the product is to spec. Simply put, it just shows what it can't be seen, uh, what the eye can't see, what typical vision systems don't see, thermal imaging can show. So as I stated earlier, we have six primary application verticals, and today we're going to be really focusing our attention on thermal forming. So thermal forming is commonly used for large-scale designs and shorter production runs. Thermal forming is the process of forming a heated plastic sheet to the surface of either a male or a female mold. So if you were comparing thermal forming to injection molding, thermal forming is typically less expensive to initially build the tool due to various reasons. However, the cost of the individual part tends to be much higher than it would be an in injection mold, which is why we found our solutions to be so viable with our friends in thermal forming. So some of the common materials used in thermal forming are PMMA, ABS, LDPE, and HDPE polypropylene, polystyrene, and PVC. Now, when you think of all those materials, what's the one common thing that they all have in common? Well, they all hold heat very well. So whether you're a vacuum former, pressure forming, or mechanical forming, heating the material to the proper heat consistently is very important. So with that said, I'm gonna turn this portion of the presentation over to my colleague, Adam Birrell. He's going to be talking about some specific case studies and solutions that we provided for some of our customers. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, automated infrared imaging with machine vision solutions, they really offer real potential for improving a whole host of industrial product applications, uh, like Chris talked about, including uh, asset management, condition monitoring, and process monitoring and control, which ultimately leads to your quality assurance questions and, and validations. So, with uh, our particular process, we have a questionnaire and we help determine the pathway, our solution pathways for customers. And they can typically run down two different trails. It ends up being usually a simple condition monitoring application and or a complex one. So you have uh, two different directions you can go. And this particular uh, customer application was a bathtub manufacturer. And they were looking for some verification of their process with the, uh, the oven temperatures with the poly sheet band shuttled in and out of it. And, making sure that the right consistent temperature profile and that it was even. So if it's a process that's relatively slow and there's uh, just something you want to check, looking for a thermal uh, consistency and there's a deviation from some particular thermal uh, profile set point, you can, you can program that into a simple thermal process monitoring system to just do some condition monitoring and then alert you whether there's a, a fault or a temperature problem and then pull that product off the line, which this particular customer was was very interested in. But we have some other applications we want to walk through that are a little more complex, a little more demanding. These applications that are coming up, some of them are driven by uh, quality issues that, uh, that customers are working through. So in the infrared machine vision market, it's a growing market within the industrial automation section, a combination of events that let us uh, 
uh, many companies, customers, and quality assurance programs that are initiating protocols for part and process validation measures to be implemented for competition as it's forced to maximize our efficiency and become more competitive. So we see the use of these thermal process monitoring solutions with machine vision for thermal forming applications being utilized more and more and more to validate these processes and increase the product quality, the throughput, and ultimately give that competitive edge with a realized increase in overall profitability. So it's really good to see that you guys on this uh, webinar are not exactly experiencing that right now. Some of you are, but we see it. And with different applications that come through our door, some of these are driven directly by that, but there's, there's other applications as well. So with uh, the slide that uh, Chris is running through here, you can see the, uh, the challenges and solutions that are presented, but I'm gonna run through some uh, general uh, information here on a couple of them. The, um, in respect to uh, thermal forming with heavy gauge vacuum forming, compression molding, since we've had a lot of success in helping people understand what's occur occurring thermally in the process, and then we add, or we aid them with the challenges that they're experiencing, and ultimately it's affecting their bottom line. So uh, with that first slide there, um, and the second slide back here, there's a, uh, a vacuum forming application that we were working on is a thermal forming for a high-end luggage manufacturer. And uh, this application was data intense. So standard machine vision was already being implemented with this particular package, um, with this particular monitoring system. They were looking for tears, holes, stretching, or thinning that occurred in the form process, the vacuum over the steep radius points of the corners of the mold. And when these physical defects were found, the standard vision system would fault the parts and parts would be moved out of the manufacturing line. And it was good for the visual side, but they, they understood and knew that thermal irregularities couldn't be detected with the standard machine vision solution. And so they were experiencing some production problems that were related to these conditions. So inconsistent mold temperatures in the process were leading to some interesting varying thickness, color, and uh, dimensional inconsistencies that with, with finished product, which I'm sure you guys have seen even in your own processes. So with uh, this particular high-end luggage manufacturer, they implemented a real robust thermal process monitoring system. One of our complex systems where the mold temperature profile is monitored, the poly sheet profile coming out of the oven was monitored, the sheet orientation parameters were being monitored. All of this was collected, analyzed, to identify and understand what temperature profiles and product placement trends were occurring in their process that led to specific defects identified. So the thermal data collected was, was essential to the engineering director in this particular application to understand truly what was going on in the process. So through the large data set collection that we were doing with them, um, we could do two-step verification processes, post-heat with oven verification, post-form with uh, tool cooling verification, with different, uh, different processes. This one, we were doing all of it. So with the large data set collection, they were able to understand the correlation of all these temperatures and actually predict the quality of their finished product once they had a large enough data set that was collected. So the decision makers used this data to make marked improvements in the manufacturing process and created the programs for the quality assurance measures on the manufacturing system to validate every single process, every single cycle, and it led to a significantly larger percentage of quality parts consistently made to meet their quality assurance program guidelines that correlated directly to their premium brand, their excellent warranty on their product, and their stellar reputation. So at the end of the day, our solution was very important. We're looking for a lot of information, a lot of data to collect and verify that this process was was performing exactly as they wanted. Yeah, and Adam, you talk about tool cooling verification. What would cause tool cooling? As far as um, uh, an inconsistency? Well, you can have like clogged water lines mm -hmm. uh, that are- uh, It's gonna cause out of spec material dimensions. Absolutely. So, yeah, it goes back, you know, and it goes back to our variation in the, in, in the process, right? You can have the perfect tool cut, you can have the perfect process, but there's variations sometimes that you just can't, that are out of your control. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so compression molding. There's been a lot of applications that have come up with compression molding. There's some specific ones that we have done with um, uh, Escalade door panels uh, I, uh, and other panels as well. There's interior panels, uh, sun visors, and rear trunk panels. There's some different applications where we've been involved. And also with uh, 
An acoustic, this one I believe is the acoustic control panel. And yeah, it is. Anyhow, with compression molding in general, we were called into uh, this particular compression molder and they were experiencing some uh, challenges and automotive supply was actually demanding some quality control measures to be put in place uh, because they were experiencing inconsistencies in their product quality between shifts. Occasional fires actually happen with the machine itself, probably sheet reaching a uh, point of combustion after heat soaking in the oven. So the question came down to, why are there fires? Well, that's a safety issue. What's happening in this process and why, why are there quality changes and differences in, in shit? So these questions were um, uh, presented. They wanted us to come on site, do a thermal study to help come up with some root causes. So plant management and operation sensors, the safety and plant personnel, they wanted us to find out what's happening here. So after the machine was cleaned up, and um, uh, after the last fire event, and uh, the machine was reset back to a neutral position, and all, all gauges check, all factory set points are met. Uh, temporary thermal camera was installed in, in the process, and we captured images of polysheet shoveling out of the oven after a full heating cycle. And just upon the first few cycles that were conducted, looking at the, the infrared images, the qualitative analysis, you could see a, a large scale thermal contrast with temperature swings varying almost 100 degrees different in specific areas of the sheet. Now, any of you guys know that 100 degrees is seriously out of spec, but this is one of the most drastic cases we've ever seen. So obviously there's a problem with something in this process. And looking at the thermal images, there was a, a cool spot, a clear cool spot, and the rest of the sheet being uh, almost normal temp. But um, as the process continued, the um, maintenance personnel was called because obviously there's a problem in the oven. So there was challenges with with uh, that particular oven, one of the zones was actually not working properly, so it was it was fixed. And once we uh, and asked about uh, the operators what was happening and the variability in the process and the output, found out that uh, the fires were caused by them actually shuttling the material back in to heat soak it a little longer, since they noticed that it wasn't looking normal and wanted to get a proper quality. So. Those were the challenges, and we corrected it with a thermal process monitoring solution implemented on it that captured every cycle, every time, on every particular process, doing two-step verification, post-heat, um, verification, post-form. We were looking at the, the whole entire data set for this particular customer, collected it all, put it all together for their end customer for quality assurance measures, because this, this challenge that they're experiencing with the oven actually made it to their customer, and so their customer was pressing them for quality control measures to be uh, utilized and implemented. Which is what we see a lot of times, right? A customer will call and demand a solution and then we're called. So 99% of our solutions are retrofitted. Uh, however, we have had the, the uh, opportunity to work at, uh, at the design phase of the process as well, which is really what we would recommend. But, you know, it's typical in manufacturing. I, I was in it, like I said, for 20, over 20 years. and. You, you typically never uh, implement something until the customer comes screaming. So um, we hope that um, some of our customers on this webinar will will understand the importance of, 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 of implementing the system before that happens. But we, we do understand, and unfortunately, that's when we are called. So sorry, Adam, to interrupt, but wanted to make that point. No, thank you, Chris. Honestly. Yeah, with compression molding, we understand, guys, that there's a, a lot of important considerations as engineers, and there you have to bear in mind in the process, there's usually six, and with our solutions and what we're looking at with temperature and monitor what's happening, we're looking at helping you guys out with usually three of the six main points when you're monitoring uh, compression molding processes when um, engineering gets involved. So with manufacturing and process engineers that are under constant pressures these days to make these determinations in the process, like uh, is this proper material, uh, have the right energy actually heated the right level at the right time at the appropriate heating technique utilizing the system to validate what's happening in the system as far as temperature is concerned post heat pre heat and uh, even through the process is, is is being seen requested more and more and more so you guys making these decisions out there on process improvement and making these more efficient less costly and improve your throughput product quality implementing these thermal inspection systems something something to consider as it's non-contact temperature measurement, non-destructive, simple to use, simple to implement, massive amount of data and value brought back. With other particular applications here, we, um, we see some other challenges when you start thinking thermally 
you know, they have some challenges with uh, uh, door panels or compression molding panels, or if there's some variability in the process and you're not sure what's happening, and if, if uh, parts are faulting from one shift to another more so than another, or possibly even seasonally, you know, there's some things you could you could stop and think about. So if you're experiencing quality challenges, there's there's a lot of questions you can start thinking about. Are there problems in the oven? Are there problems in my uh, process? Is there an environmental condition? We've had the situation with an environmental condition where, you know, it's summertime, plant's 90 degrees, operator at second shift turns on a large fan to cool themselves down and the fan's pointing right at your temperature sensitive process. So, you know, and then opposite, we've seen the other swing. So it's winter time and the plant's missing some environmental changes in the plant when the back only backs get opened and the doors lock open for an extended period of time. So, you know, environmental temperature changes can affect the process as well. Yeah, we had one customer come to us um, last week, actually, we were discussing with them. And um, it's funny, they were having issues and they could not figure out where their issues was coming from. Um, and it was not until they called in maintenance about three weeks later, maintenance was staying on top of the, of the thermal former and they had noticed a, a crack in the window. So um, that was, to your point, Adam, I mean, variation could come from anywhere, right? These tools are seen to cut. They're typically almost perfect when, when everything um, is said and done after, after the design phase. It's all of the other variation that comes in after that that plays a, plays a role in some of the scrap that we see in these plants on a daily basis. So, so why don't you talk for a, a moment about the closed loop process? Sure, closed loop process, this is great. So implementing a thermal process monitoring solution may be simple or a complex application. At the end of the day, you can take this information, temperature changes, if it's too high and you need to make an adjustment uh, in the oven, you can take that and turn it into a closed loop process feedback. You can dial down the oven temperatures. You can change uh, controllers if you want to. You want to move the product off the line, send a signal over to a robot to remove the product from the process itself. Or uh, back to our earlier condition, there, if, if there's a change in uh, the tool cooling itself, alert maintenance on, on uh, possible water line problem or uh, clogged water lines or some type of maintenance problem, the pump might not be working properly or something of that sort of spec, and um, turn it into a closed loop feedback process where something is being um, moved into the actual mold itself. Um, there's many different ways to do the closed loop process in order to create a, a full function system that can change as your conditions change. So it's just a matter of understanding what those needs are and then creating a list and attacking that list of those needs and addressing that closed loop feedback process for whatever it is you're looking to validate. Okay, so um, overtime manufacturing processes tend to deviate from the standard. Most companies use the Sigma unit to measure the amount of deviation from the required specifications. But this collection of data is only as powerful as the data collected. Using our thermal imaging systems, data can be collected on 100% of the sheet on 100% of the product being manufactured. We call this the 100-100 advantage. Using data from the entire sheet will provide critical information such as seasonal changes. Uh, Adam spoke to those uh, today in the presentation. Variations being caused in the tooling facility oven zone malfunctions, et cetera. That's just a few of, uh, of many issues that could happen within the process. Think of the control you would have by understanding the, temp the temperature on the entire sheet of material, not just on a few areas being measured by a parameter over time. The data that could be collected, this information is also being collected on 100% of the parts. Our system could provide data on 100% of the material surface on 100% of the product. This data could be used. I served as an engineer for five years in a manufacturing facility. And any process that we had this amount of data on was always something that made me smile because it was, it was uh, made it much less complex when you're using, uh, approaching it from a continuous improvement standpoint, Kaizen events or whatever the, the continuous improvement events that you have in your facilities. Think of having this data. Think of this, customer calls and, and says, we had an issue on your product. Um, by getting the uh, VIN number of, the, of the, uh, the product, you can trace it back to a barcode, give your customer, put it on the 8D or the quality analysis sheet that they use, 
put that thermal image and the temperature of that uh, measurement of temperature of that material on the, the 8D or the quality analysis um, sheet. That's, you know, in the manufacturing world, when you're a supplier, you're, you're guilty until proven innocent. And you have to have that data to be able to prove your innocence. So that, that, that would be a great thing to have. And I wish I had it in my past uh, on some of the systems and some of the customers that I had to deal with. So in summary, integrated thermal imaging provides 100% verification on automation processes. It prevents scrap and unwanted parts in manufacturing systems. It identifies upstream manufacturing process errors and issues, and it delivers measurable returns on investment. It provides quality and production measurement to meet the customer's requirements.